Hello, I'm David Simpson, editor of Third Wednesday Magazine, an independent quarterly journal of literary and visual arts, available in print and now free online at thirdwednesdaymagazine.org. This is one of a series of recorded readings produced to highlight books by some of our magazine's contributing writers and poets. For this reading, I'll be joined by Lawrence W. Thomas, a poet from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Larry Thomas's poetry is as varied as his background. He lived in Germany, Uganda, Costa Rica, and Saudi Arabia. He likes formal poetry and has books and chapbooks of villanelles, sonnets, limericks, Sestina's pantoums, prose poems, and a few forms he's invented himself. He writes free verse as well. Mr. Thomas has published a dozen books of poetry, fiction, humor, and creative nonfiction. He's lectured and given workshops in Arkansas for 20 years and was present at the very beginning of Third Wednesday Magazine. His latest collection is Spindrift, New and Selected Poems, published by Atmosphere Press. Thank you, Lawrence. Here's Larry Thomas. Thank you, David. I'm going to read a few poems from Spindrift, which is my latest book of poetry from the Atmosphere Press, and it can be Googled. The first poem is Transaction. The path seems to end at the stream, or maybe it continues on the other side. I see you in the crossing and offer you the stream. Turning downstream, I find the security of a large boulder after I leap from another smaller one where I teetered momentarily. I give you the rock. There is something shining there, a gold nugget maybe, a silver spoon down deep. But the water covers it and the sun splashes on the surface. So all I see is the sky broken into ripples and clouds churning. I will give you the path, the rock, the stream, if you will show me the source. Impending storm for Ted Couser, who was one of my teachers. The tree bends under its weight of wind like a muscular man unloading bags of wheat, groaning under the pressure. He pauses to wipe his brow with a red bandana he once wore years ago to the square dance. He doesn't think of that now, but winces at the thought of how much wheat there is still to be unloaded as he returns to his work, bending like a tree in the wind. Burying the dead. This sorrow rebuilds you, the mourner is told. A shock to the system and out of the chasm, eventually a clearer view. You imagine the span of your future broken. Imagine also something remaining inside you. Call it strength if you want, or what made your love strong. Imagine it growing because of this change, as if in losing, something is found, even for you. Something more lasting, that even in loss there is gain, leaving you more than you were. A town never sleeps, for Lee, after chemo. A town never really sleeps, there's always some figure loitering idly on the platform at the station or just walking along under a street light. Someone drinking coffee in a restaurant and one serving the coffee making small talk. Light behind curtains marks an insomniac, insomniac or sleep interrupted. Sometimes on his rounds, a cop responds to a call to settle some difference and restore order, or he just saunters along clicking his nightstick on a picket fence. A dog barks, a car passes, 
the tower clock ticks away the hours as unnoticed as the convalescent moon gliding silently on. What can never touch me? Things we can't explain become religion. Water nymphs, the rainbow, all storms and disasters, the death of children and miracles, inventions to justify our gods, laying the blame somewhere else so we never have to do anything. I called upon my soul one day, but of course, nobody was home. Deities ultimately devolve to what is good in my own eyes, sorting out beauty and arbitrary discussion decision that El Greco is better than Watteau, Philip Glass than Puccini. Strictures notwithstanding, we compare horses to oranges. The fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden makes a very good Waldorf salad. My job to deal when devils dance, undoing what can never touch me, a biblical monopoly on truth, the burning of the flag, or sitting for the national anthem. No sensation without sense deafens me to the constant drumming on my door, pleas for money and teary causes which already have their answers. And a couple of villanelles. I'm very fond of formal poetry and here are a couple of them. Reflections. I think that I found beauty like Narcissus who at the stream admired his reflection and saw in his own face what perfect bliss is. I surround myself with anything that pleases, purchase or gifts from my collection of things I find of beauty like the dishes I acquire or cats, benign or meretricious, wooden, glass, ceramic, each possession chosen to reflect whatever phases I pass through, pictures, flower vases, bric-a-brac, souvenirs, selection based on beauty guides my purchases. When I behold the ug ugly, my mind dismisses it as gauche a rather rude distraction from anything like bliss and quite atrocious. By personal selection and careful choices of artifacts for which I feel affection, I think that I've found beauty like Narcissus, seeing within myself what perfect bliss is. It came. It came upon a midnight clear of debt, that glorious birth of something new but old, a time of peace and love on earth. And yet before the time of wondering what we get by playing on our lustful harps of gold so we can get a midnight clear of debt. It came before the advertisers set the standard everyone should have and hold, a time of peace and love on earth. And yet, the world in solemn stillness soon forgot the angels' voices. Bargain items to be sold came upon the midnight deadline. Debt o'ertook the coming spirit and offset the season's joys by prophets seen of old. A time of peace and love on earth, and yet what angels sing we should never forget. And then perhaps shall come the time foretold that came upon a midnight clear of debt, a time of peace and love on earth, not yet. And finally, prayer. Oh, that I may be able to organize my days into neat packages of goals set and accomplished, that as I retire, I may tie the ribbon on the bundle and rest untroubled to know that I don't need to look over my shoulder to decide which God to believe, nor to follow the polls in suggesting the next incumbent. Let me walk the path through wrong decisions alone, rather than taking the course of other people's choices. Give me strength to turn from tempting TV ads or joining organizations to increase their strength while diminishing mine. 
Just to say no is easy and there's an end to it. Grant me the power and wisdom to know when not to just say yes. And I thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. I'm sure our audience enjoyed that as I did. That's all for now from Third Wednesday Magazine. Be sure to follow us on YouTube for more short videos. You can also follow us on Facebook for updates, featured poems, and more. Once again, thank you, Lawrence Thomas. His latest book, Spindrift, New and Selected Poems, published by Atmosphere Press.